offer us identity. They help us understand what it means to be part of a community, what it means to be we. Think about Michael Jordan, for example. Michael Jordan is what it means to be a great athlete. Michael Jordan is so iconic that he defies category. We say things like, Babe Ruth was the Michael Jordan of baseball. Elon Musk is the Michael Jordan of innovation. Think about Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman was raised to be the perfect picture of what it means to be an Amazon warrior. She was the example that all of the other Amazon warriors were supposed to follow. But come to find out, not everything that she had been told about who she was was actually true. We have to be careful how we use the word we. For example, what does it mean to be American? Does it have something to do with the music we listen to or the food we eat or our understanding of democracy? Superman is arguably the comic book superhero and he fights for truth justice in the American way, but fighting for the American way doesn't work well outside of America. We have to be careful how we use the word we. Think about your church. Maybe you say something as simple as, we love traditional worship or we love contemporary music, and that's fine. But what if someone in your church says, we are conservative or we are liberal. We have to be careful. It's one of my pet peeves when people use the word we with reckless abandon and without qualifiers. When we look at the world, this is what we see, or the problems we're facing are, what if I look at the world differently than you see it? Or the problems that I'm working through are not your problems. Heroes reveal to us identity of what it means to be part of the community. But so do those first followers. Maybe this is why Jesus chose disciples so early in his ministry. Early in his ministry, Jesus was walking around uh, the Galilee region and he saw Peter, James, and John in a sailboat and Andrew. I don't know why Andrew didn't make the Vacation Bible School song, but he called out to them and said, drop your nets and follow me. James and John get out of the boat and they leave their father Zebedee behind. Now, and I've heard this sermon before. I've heard that we should be like James and John and get out of the boat and follow Jesus. This is who we are. Don't be like Zebedee who stayed in the boat. But if we're not careful, all we're doing is creating two different communities, us and them. And who's to say that Zebedee who stayed in the boat, isn't following Jesus. Someone has to fish. Someone has to feed those who are feeding the world. There is us and there is them. And when I was growing up, I was a baseball player. So what it meant to be us was Mark McGuire. Mark McGuire was my hero when I was young. I would try to practice his swing. I would watch him on television. I idolized him. I remember he was doing everything right in baseball. I remember watching him hit home run 565 and 566 in person with my own eyes. And I'm not too proud to say I might have cried a little. My mother knew how much I loved Mark McGuire. So after he broke the home run record, she bought me an oil painting an oil painting of him breaking the home run record against the Cubs. And as a St. Louis Cardinals fan, breaking the record against the Cubs was super sweet. I loved this painting so much that when I got married to my wife, I placed the painting right over the mantle so that everyone could see this beautiful thing that I had acquired. The painting is now in storage. I've learned a lot. Mark McGuire was someone I tried to be. But of course, sometimes our heroes fall and our heroes fail. There was an allegation that Mark McGuire had been using drugs to help him get ahead in the game. 
and in a very real way, I went through the different stages of grief. It started with denial. This isn't true. It's fake news. There's no way he could have done this. But then there was anger. How dare you say this about my hero? How dare you keep bringing this up? And then there was bargaining. Uh, maybe he did use drugs, but you still have to hit a fastball. It doesn't help your hand-eye coordination at all. Drugs don't help you understand the game better. And then there was sadness. I thought to myself, how could you do this to me? Is all the time I invested in mimicking your swing and how you play ball, was that somehow a waste? You feel betrayed. And then there's acceptance. You name it, you claim it, you ask for forgiveness, seek reconciliation, and then you move on. Mark McGuire had let me down. Sometimes when our heroes fail and our heroes fall, it somehow tarnishes who we are because we so closely associate us with them. But you name it, you claim it, you ask for forgiveness, and then you move on. Our heroes are human. Sometimes our heroes fail us. Sometimes we forget that we all fall short of God's glory. Now, it's one thing to name it, claim it, and move on, but sometimes we make the mistake of digging our heels in even deeper, thinking that our side is always right and their side is always wrong. Our heroes, those who make us, us, can do no wrong. And the person that makes them, they, can't do anything right. Think about a political campaign, for example. Sometimes we look at the other person's candidate as if they can't do anything right. And we tend to overlook the sins of our candidate, understanding that no one is perfect. We start to look at the speck of sawdust in the other's eye instead of taking the plank out of our own eye. And at worst, we take the plank out of our own eye and beat our opponent with it. So that at the end of the day, there is only us. This is not what Jesus calls us to do. Jesus is different than our heroes because Jesus doesn't create a community of us versus they fighting for truth, justice in the American way. Jesus is for truth and justice. As it says in Galatians, in Christ, there is no longer Jew or Greek, slave or free, male and female. We are all one in Christ. Now, there is still Jew and there is still Greek. There is still us and there is still them. But there's no longer a dividing line between us. Another thing that separates Jesus from our heroes is that, yes, Jesus did fall. But his falling doesn't tarnish our identity or who we are. It is actually where we find our identity. In Jesus' falling, we will be raised. Through Jesus' crucifixion, we have found abundant life. Yes, there is us, and yes, there is them, but there's also the body of Christ. Both Simon the Zealot and Matthew the tax collector were at the table with Jesus when he broke bread and said, this is my body. It's not politics that brought them together. It's not their understanding of economics that brought them together. It was Jesus inviting them to the table. There is us and there is them and there is the body of Christ calling us all together for a seat at the table.